Zeke going down for murder. Murder! But he don't know nothing. Monet getting her groove back with Mecca. I mean, Dante. And Tariq taking things serious with Lauren. Y'all, we got a lot to talk about with episode three of Power Book 2 Go season two. Episode titled, A Greater Good. It's your guest, Erica Vane, breaking it all down. Let's get into it. All right, so the episode opens up on a fundraiser celebration, some little policey moment, right? With Rashad Tate doing what Rashad Tate does um, and supporting his brother, who we learn is leaving the streets and headed to be a detective with the DA, which ultimately means that we are going to start to see a lot more of him. He's going to get a lot more active in this show, probably persecuting Tariq or the Tejadas at some point because he's now going to be a part of the DA office. I knew they was going to have to tie this in some way with us losing Cooper Sex and now having him cross over to Davis's team and switch over to the other side. And he's smashing a little lady in the prosecutor's office but we still need something else in reference to the DA or a heavier force and Kamal Tate is going to wind up being that force now this is something for later on down the line but it's definitely dope that they put that in here and I'm always here for both of the Tate brothers getting a little bit more screen time because they are phenomenal actors I love their chemistry I love seeing them together in a show and I'm here for it it's going to be a problem for Tariq and the Tejadas but you know we'll cross that bridge when we get there now also at the top of the episode we get to see Monet to set things straight when it comes to Tariq and Kane. She is not aware that they are already in cahoots to a certain extent, right? Because they just working together to be able to stay out of jail behind the whole Jabari Reynolds killing. But she brings them together now that Kane has been brought back into the fold, being the person who supplied the new connect. And I hope y'all can hear my air quotes with that because that new connect is also her old connect, but you know, she don't even know any of that right now. She just wants to be able to squash any of the beef. And they both play their parts in reference to protecting like they still had beef they still had issues up until Monet leaves which Kane definitely still does have issues with Tariq but all of his issues are rooted in the fact that he feels like Monet loves Tariq more which is like sir that is not her son even though she has shown him a little preferential treatment even though she has given him a lot of leeway she still loves your little beady headed ass even after you keep acting a monkey fool and doing things that's going up against the family so I'm gonna need him to get his personal vendettas his personal issues and his insecurity in check because while Kane is a bad boy a dangerous boy a very capable of living and running in this life boy he also is going to wind up getting himself or his family killed or in jail if he continues to act so irrationally and emotional but we ain't even gonna go all the way that far just yet I love the moment when we're leaving this scene (laughs) after Monet drives off and after Kane drives off and this is shout out to the writers the writers of Power Book 2 Ghost y'all did that you know that we needed this Tariq makes a comment about how he does so much for this family and they don't never offer him no ride they be having this boy run up and down New York City to meet to connect to do all of these things and that boy is on his feet all the time and he is literally always running and they both drove off one in a g-wagon and one in a range and neither one of them offered him a ride and they all the way out here like meeting by some bridge like why how i'm gonna need to read to get a car at this point because <laughs> it's giving ghetto for him and if he's hopping subways and running still to make all of these things happen no wonder he's still always late no wonder he's always distracted and tired but y'all that's that's not a hit on there. I thought that, that was a really dope beat to put in there because all of us in the audience have been wondering, like, and the fact that Tariq said it, I was like, exactly. All right, so I don't know what Mecca's into, but we need to take a moment to talk about him because he is going to be a problem. And it's with every single episode, I'm realizing how much he is really going to be a problem. We get to see him at this party. It's a birthday party for Nuff, his, one of his people who basically just feels like a guap as well. So it's so funny that Mecca had problems with Kane running with guap and he checked Kane about the company that he keep. And then you turn around and you doing this birthday party for this dude Nuff, who basically is your version of guap. But he's blindfolded trying to cut into a pig to cut out drugs or whatever is in this pig. And I'm just like, what are, what are y'all doing? 
this ain't no damn luau y'all ain't roasted the- like what is actually happening and going back to the whole idea that nuff is literally mecca's version of guap he literally starts running his mouth to kane almost immediately and shout out to that chef because that chef is going to be a very pivotal character to move forward every time we see something happening in mecca's house the chef gets a nod to him or he knows something or he just knows what to do and in this case he sh- he hushes and distracts nuff the first time that he starts to talk too much to Kane about something and then Mecca winds up having to choke him out to silence him about whoever this woman is that has Mecca's nose wide open and keeping him from actually entertaining any of the girls and all of the other craziness that they have going on within their whole setup. Nuff literally tells Kane that he's only been focused on one woman since they got to New York and then he gets put to sleep and we know nobody else knows especially Kane doesn't know that this woman is actually Monet and we get the confirmation of this later on in the episode but him being so willing to talk to Kane and tell all of Mecca's business is just like yeah you is definitely the guap of the situation and you gonna be a problem because loose lips sink ships sir go in there real quick like let's just go ahead and stay on mecca because mecca you know is in business with kane he gets kane to tell him about Tariq and what he got going on and also what his issues are with Tariq. mecca winds up following kane to the meetup with Tariq and brayden and helps him identify how he's going to gain control of Tariq. first of all kane why do you feel like you need to gain control that's not how this works Tariq is one of your distributors let him distribute however the hell he sees fit why do you need to be so integral into his system into his business like just collect the money as long as he not coming up short you don't have no problems and this is going to be part of what Kane's problem is but I digress Mecca helps him identify that Brayden is going to be his way in and I always figured that ever since we had that moment last season where Kane snatched up Brayden put him up on a block and Brayden held his own I always knew that we were going to get a circle back moment with Brayden and Kane and now Kane is going to have to really play up the friendship and the support and the showing up for Brayden so that he can try to drive a wedge between him and Tariq that's gonna make some unnecessary drama but hey it's gonna be there and then Mecca was very very busy in this episode because while he's figuring out a plan to devise how Kane is going to be able to infiltrate Tariq's business he's also entertaining the, the call from Monet and buying out a restaurant and reconnecting with her and then we learn that it's been 24 years since whatever they had going on and we find out that it's also his fault that they aren't more now and she has no idea that he's actually in the life she thinks that this import export business that he you know on the surface on the front is all that he has going on and has afforded him this lifestyle and we gonna go right on over to Monet because while they're getting their frequent flyer miles up in this helicopter reconnecting on a whole other level Zeke is calling her and trying to get her to come help him get out of police custody right now but she's too busy distracted by the old flame because she get her groove back now how did monet end up in this helicopter with mecca slash dante she ends up with him because diana comes in earlier in the episode and is asking questions about kane and if uh lorenzo knows that kane's back and all this and she uses that as an excuse to parlay a reason not to go to the jail to see lorenzo she sends diana instead and then she uses that time to reconnect with dante well i guess it makes sense because ghost had a separate name right ghost was ghost and and then he was James St. Patrick. Mecca is Mecca and he's also Dante. So I guess we're going to see as we go on a little bit more about both of his lives so we can really fully understand the name change and like how he's actually keeping things separate and where in fact did he come from fully. But I thought it was just so interesting how in this episode Monet is giving in and she said that she wasn't gonna call him last episode she told him it was too late but she's giving it to her impulse of like wanting to reconnect with him and because she does so she misses the fact that Zeke gets snatched up and she doesn't pull him out of custody before he drops Ramirez's PBA card and she also misses a meetup with Lorenzo that Lorenzo really really needed and wanted so she's starting to well she has already been losing her grip on the business but she's starting to lose it even more and it's all by way of her seeking whatever she feels like she's missing because you know she communicated last episode to Lorenzo that she didn't think that this was going to be it and she's over it she didn't 
devised a plan for them to get out of the business once you know Zeke goes into the league and it's just like Monet it's giving every single episode you have less and less control and less and less senses when you gonna stop all the bleeding because y'all finna bleed out here can we take a second to talk about Detective Whitman who is deranged I'm convinced he is giving sex 2.0 with less personality more bipolar and clearly a past that informs his poor judgment and personal vendettas <sighs> he's talking about he won't wrestle so he put cuffs on Carrie and Z. It's like, sir, you are the problem with the police. Lazy ass personal vengeance seeking police. He is focused on pinning the murder on two people that had nothing to do with the murder, all behind coincidence and his personal issues with Carrie. Meanwhile, any evidence pointing in that direction is thin at best. I'm actually proud of Zeke though for keeping his mouth shut about Carrie and their relationship. Detective Whitman had that boy at the precinct all night, morning, and the following day, and he stuck to the script about how he ain't know nothing. Some Milgram just talked to a bunch of students. She don't know nothing. <laughs> I will never let that go. But then also him sticking to the strip blows up Carrie's alibi and also winds up putting him in the crosshairs of the search for Ramirez and how he's tied to the murder because he uses Ramirez's PBA card that links him. But he doesn't know that Ramirez is missing. And then he also doesn't know that Ramirez is actually dead and not missing. And if y'all are wondering what a PBA card is, the Police Benevolence Association card. It is something that is issued out by the police union to police officers and they are able to give it out to their friends and family. Kind of as like a little nod to like if you ever get pulled over or stopped or something, you can show this to a police officer and they're supposed to take things easier on you or be mindful that you are actually linked to police sounds like a get out of jail free card to me and this is 100 percent legal and happening in real life y'all look it up i googled it i could not believe it i also want to make a note about a few things in this episode we don't get to see kane scared too often in all honesty the only other time i remember seeing him scared was with lorenzo last season but in this episode we have a beat where he is definitely scared of mecca while they are in that little weight room and in all honesty he probably really should be also in this episode we see Tariq still fighting to get yaz back out of the system them, and he actually uses the yeah situation to smooth things over with Lauren and get her off his back and I'm just curious as to when he decided on her because he clearly is still into Diana unless he's playing us and her and acting like he's into Diana but I'm still worried like when do we decide that Lauren was going to be it because while she understands this whole distraction so that you can try to get your sister back and you have a lot on your plate because you are basically the man of the house and dealing with all of this grief loss and all of that will she understand that you are a baby kingpin in the make I really want to know and in all honesty y'all when I equate the whole Tariq Lauren Diana Effie whoever situation I feel like Lauren would probably be his Angela Diana would be his Tasha so I'm actually kind of happy that he's not choosing Diana right away because we know what that turned out to be for a ghost but I'm also wondering had ghost chosen Angie from the jump would he been able to arise in the life would she actually understand it been a ride or die because I don't know if Lauren got it in her but I guess we gonna see. Also in this episode, we get to see a good amount of Davis McLean. He has to remind Sax what side he works for after they meet with Diana, who was turned away because she's trying to get them to reopen Lorenzo's case and get him out of jail. But then he later figured, Sax later figures out a way that they can get Lorenzo out of jail. So that's gonna be problems for everybody. Lorenzo coming home is gonna be problems for Monet, Dante, and Kane. And I know that Kane thinks that Monet isn't running the business right, but he ain't gonna like it when his father's back on top either. Especially after how Lorenzo put that beating on him last season now i cannot not mention brayden because he definitely has a bunch of major important rules in this episode he is Tariq's right hand he is handling the business yo this robo locker sh that he got cooked up is pure brilliance other than the fact that I don't think that Tariq accounts for the increased foot traffic going up to this rooftop so while it's incognito before and Braden having these lockers installed is genius I still think that they're gonna have a problem trying to localize all their products to this one place and this be it because somebody's gonna notice that now more people are going up and down in this hallway Hell, you even had Diana walk up there and get you caught up with Lauren for a second. So I'm just saying. Also speaking about Brayden, he just had some really pivotal moments in this episode. Even like seeing Brayden, Tariq, and Kane interact was pure brilliance at the top of the episode. I was rolling when Kane said, when you and Machine Gun Kelly get, <laughs> get Monet's business stuff, I'm going to be right there laughing. It's just like 
bruh, what? Like, he called this man Machine Gun Kelly. I was on the floor, y'all. But aside from Brady holding up his own in their business and really supporting, getting the money that he needs to be able to pay to get a front company so that he can get some checks, Tariq is really trying to get an apartment, make it look like he has a legit job so that he can get Yaz back. He also asked Brady to sign on as the president of this company so it'll look even more legit, and Brayden does so. So this is really going to be a problem if Brayden does wind up turning on Tariq because he is getting even more ingrained in Tariq and his personal affairs. Now, we also get a moment where Kane rolls up and threatens Tariq about the whole Zeke situation, and that was just him lashing out. I cannot wait till Tariq and Kane get through what they got going on and Kane actually trusts Tariq because I'm tired of him beating, beating up on Tariq, and I think that they could be really, really amazing allies. I'm gonna need Kane to release all his insecurities around Tariq, all of his resentment and jealousy, and go ahead and just be his friend because he know he really wants to, but, you know, I digress. All right, y'all, that's my full breakdown of The Power Book 2 Go, Season 2, Episode 3, A Greater Good Episode. Let me know what you thought of the episode in the comment section down below. What was your favorite moments? What was something that confused you? I want to know all that and more. We can chop it up in the comment section. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button. Turn on your bell notifications so you don't miss any of my Power Book 2 Ghost videos. I love y'all so much for watching, and I got a few other videos coming this week so we can talk about specific points within the series. Keep it locked. Bye.